Hi, I'm Pest. I'm a nine time radiant, and in this video, we're going over everything you need to know to aim like tens. We'll be going over sensitivity, warm up routines, aim theory, aim training, and more throughout the video. This will be the only aim guide you'll ever need, I promise. Make sure to stick around until the end for access to my entire performance plan, previously only included in my paid coaching session. Let's get into the video. I want to start off with some common misconceptions around aim and valor. First, as much as you don't want to hear it, grid shot is one of the least efficient ways to train your aim. We'll get more into this in the aim training portion of the video, but rapidly shooting static targets eight times the size of anything you'll be shooting in Val is damn near a waste of time. Second, most people think that flicking is the most important thing to train in Valorant when the overwhelming majority of your gunfights are dealt with in the crosshair placement and micro adjustment range. If you're playing the game correctly, over 80% of your gunfights should be dealt with within this range. That being said, having smooth mouse control and accurate micro adjustments is exponentially more important than hitting those nutty 10 splits. Third, I think it's important to recognize that no matter how good your aim is without basic game sense and positioning, it means nothing. If you're constantly putting yourself in positions to hit a hard shot to survive rather than focusing on positioning and outplaying your opponent, your priorities are all wrong. While doing my aim training research, I found consistently some of the best aimers in the world, according to aim training scores, struggle to get out of the plat because their game sense lacks so much. This is normal, and if they were to put the same amount of time into Val as they did aim trainers, I have no questions they would reach a higher rank. But I wanted to give you this example so you understand how important the other skill gaps are as well. Lastly, I wanted to say that improving your aim takes time and consistency. The reason Tens is as good as he is is because he spent tens of thousands of hours in FPSs and aim trainers and stayed consistent over the years of playing. Everything I tell you will only get you so far doing it for a week or two, but staying consistent over time will drastically improve your consistency and aim if you stick with it. Next, I want to go over sensitivity and how to find the optimal sense for you. A lot of people are under the impression that once you find their perfect sense, they'll just aim like tens. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. Every sense has its own pros and cons, and regardless of what you use, it'll take hours of practice to master. High sense makes larger flicks easier to hit and can feel more free or loose with the ability to look around faster. While this initially seems attractive, I want to remind you how important consistent crosshair placement and micro adjustments are when playing the game correctly. The higher the sense, the harder it is to control, and smaller movements will be much less consistent. I typically recommend going on the lower side to make the higher percentage of your engagements easier. While it may be harder to flick to unexpected enemies, you're tending to the 70-80% of your gunfights in the micro adjustment range, overall making you much more consistent. I consider anything from 0.3 to 0.4-800 DPI to be a solid range to test in, typically starting on the lower side and then working your way up. Anything above this and you're overall making the game way harder on yourself than it needs to be. Also, if you use a different DPI, you can simply do the calculations. It's all the same. I just use 800 as default. If you're limited by mouse pad space, being able to do a 180 turn from the center of your mouse pad to the edge is generally how you find your optimal sense. If mouse pad space isn't an issue, I just recommend using whatever's most comfortable to you. Next, we'll go into warmups and different things you can utilize in the practice range. Unfortunately, the practice range is fairly limited. However, there are some good things you can utilize. As far as warmups, I'd recommend the Gambit Nats warmup, which includes Eliminate 100, Hard Bots, and a Death Batch. Make sure you're moving and counter strafing in the Eliminate 100, and if the hard bots are too much, you can start with medium and work your way up. Some other things you can do is the spike diffuse course on medium or hard. The hard variation is a great indicator of if you're peaking correctly in game. If this is impossible for you to complete, it's likely an indication that peaking and movement is something you need to work on. Some other things you can do in the practice range is use sage walls as obstacles to peek in and out of and practice your movement. Doing this simulates in-game peaking much better than just going back and forth like most people do. Another thing you can do is use this glitch to limit the amount of bots that spawn in the practice mode. By using Brimmel over the bots you want to disappear and quickly switching to another agent as they die will spawn only the living bots when you switch. You can further combine this with peeking in and out of sage walls. It's probably the most immersive experience you can get in the practice range. Lastly, let's talk about death matches. DMs are generally the best way you can practice mechanics in Valorant itself, but you can take it a couple steps further. This applies to everything in Valorant, but especially mechanics. You want to remove variables and focus on improving one thing at a time. Similar to sports, you practice individual skill sets before putting it all together in game. You want to pick individual things to improve on while practicing. Playing deathmatches, focusing on crosshair placement or peaking, for example, will elevate your game more than just aimlessly roaming the map. You can also do things like guardian-only DMs to ensure your movement and aim are in sync before hopping into ranked. Next, let's talk about aim training, aim theory, and why grid shot sucks. While grid shot can be fun, it's almost completely irrelevant to aiming in Valorant. To start, the targets are exponentially bigger than the head at any range in Valorant, getting you in the habit of rushing your shots and hitting easier shots than you'll ever get in game. Second, not only are the targets completely still, but you are as well. In Valorant, your enemy will be moving as well as yourself, making spamming static targets as fast as you can just not very relevant to training your aim in Valorant. In general, the best use of your time is shooting the smallest possible targets or moving targets to simulate in-game gunfights. The playlist I have included in the performance plan heavily focus on micro adjustments to small targets, moving targets, and tracking. Tracking is another very overlooked concept in the Valorant community. As I said before, at least 80% of your gunfights should be dealt with in the crosshair placement range. Well, what is crosshair placement? You're tracking the edges of walls as you move around the map, hence practicing tracking is incredibly effective for mouse control and consistent
consistent crosshair placement. When playing click timing scenarios, make sure to prioritize at least 90% accuracy before going for speed. What makes aim training so effective is you get to reverse engineer your aim and focus on accuracy without the in-game pressures of opponents shooting back. By focusing on accuracy during training, it will make it second nature once you are rushing your shots in-game. Another thing to consider is having direct paths to targets. In general, there will be a larger flick to cover the distance, followed by a micro adjustment to hit the target. You want to build good habits early and have direct paths to your target, so when you do speed up, you have smooth and controlled movements. For both my aim labs and Kovacs playlist, check the performance plan in the description. Next, let's talk about muscle memory and consistency. There's tons of different theories on muscle memory, so if it's something you're really interested in, I recommend you doing your own research, but I'll sum up what I believe is important. The biggest thing to keep in mind is limiting any variables in and out of game. This includes keeping the same sensitivity, mouse grip, sitting position, etc. If you think about it, if you aim train with your body in a different position every time, your aim will feel different every time you get on, making it very hard to be consistent. Making sure you're in a repeatable position with your chair, monitor, mouse, all in the default position is crucial to building muscle memory and staying consistent. Lastly, for free access to my performance plan, just join my Discord and head to the coaching section where it'll be free to download. I appreciate you making it till the end. If this video helped you out at all, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more content just like this. This is my first mechanics guide ever, so I'd love to hear down in the comments anything I could have done better and if you enjoyed. Also, I offer some of the most affordable Radiant coaching you can book as soon as tomorrow on Medify. Use code PEST-YT for an additional 10% off checkout. Link is in the description. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.